This is the class where I want you to learn, number one, why you should be ordering labs for your own purposes. What is it? What's in it for the doctor to order tests? And then why should you be ordering labs for your patients in terms of the patient perspectives? Right off the bat, if you just think about yourself, the way that labs work, the way this whole industry works, the whole functional medicine world works is that we order labs, patients see the lab results. This motivates them to get supplement programs. This motivates them to make lifestyle changes. And that has a huge impact on their health. And if you don't have the lab test, the motivation to do a supplement program, which leads to the motivation to make lifestyle change, falls apart. The other thing that the labs are really extraordinary at is finding what the underlying cause or the root cause of the person's problem is. That's the whole point of the testing. And because of these variables, we want to make sure that you guys are super comfortable ordering your first test so you can get into this whole functional medicine thing and make it happen for yourself and for your patients. And this is, oh, Adrian already mentioned this, but we have basically a thousand dollar class that I spent months and months building which for the first time, we're just giving away for free to any Rupa customer who orders a lab. And you can scan that QR code. We're going to be starting this in November. There's going to be live calls with me. I'll talk you through the whole thing. And this class is just looking at the scripts and the dialogue and the techniques for explaining the value of the labs to patients so you can get patients to order their first labs. And we've put hundreds of doctors through this, actually probably several thousand now. It really works. It's easy to learn. In a month, you'll be able to do this. And we have one on the adrenals, one on organic acids, and one on GI. It's all clustered together in this super class for you guys. So we call it Supercharge 23. And we're going to turn you all into lab whisperers. We'll talk about that in a minute, okay? So again, the goal here is to start ordering functional medicine testing by ordering your first lab and overcoming whatever those roadblocks are that make us a little nervous to do that. I want to show you what are the three essential functional medicine test kits to order, to choose from, okay? So you can choose one of those. And then I want you to be able to explain to the patients that you're working with why these labs are so important. And then being able to match the right test with the right patient. We can pull all this off in the next 40 minutes. It'd be pretty impressive. Hey, Evan, if we don't get there, guess what? We have this free class for you. This is like a whole month of materials for you to work on. Okay. So we're trying to pair these two things together. What the, one of the, I think the most profound parts about functional medicine is that everyone on this call is a healer, primarily by nature, by birth, by whatever your karma is that turned you into that. And that we're all struggling with what's happening with the healthcare system and not so happy with it. Right. And we're trying to change that. We're looking for, to be agents of change. And I see the labs as just a primary driver of you being able to complete your mission. And that's why I spend a fair amount of my time trying to get people to order and interpret these tests because I know they can be life-changing for your patients. I've seen the results of that over the last 30 years. And I want you to be able to share in the joy of ordering a test, getting the results back, putting a person on a program and watching them get better. It's absolutely the biggest rush you could ever have in your life. It's just a wonderful thing. Okay. And we have all kinds of things in the mentorship class. We, just in the last week, we had a brand new doctor on her first test, and she's massively changed this autistic kid's life because this kid is speaking for the first time. Her first test, we had another doctor, medical doc, got her patient off of thyroid medications. I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to spend a decade figuring this stuff out. You can learn this pretty quickly, and we want to just shorten up that time so you guys can get all this going right away, okay? Your first lab test orders, they require patient communication skills. And the biggest roadblock is just, how do you explain this to your patient? How do you explain the value of the test to the patient? And we want you to have really clear language that you can use because when you've been doing this for 10 years, you can explain to the patient why to do the test because you understand the benefit of the test. But in the beginning, you have to learn what the benefit of the test is. So you can explain that to the patient so that they want to order the test. And then we want you to work on your new superpower as well, which is interpreting lab tests. And that's where this gets even more fun. So the initial hurdle is just get, order your first lab and just do it today. Don't hesitate. The saddest thing that happens to me is when I go to a conference and I see this doctor and I'm like, hey, Susie, what's happening? I haven't seen you for a year. 
what's going on? And Susie's an emergency room doctor. And I'm like, have you started your practice yet? And she's like, no, I really want to start my functional practice, but I haven't ordered my first lab yet. We just want to get through that emotional block and get you started. And a lot of, I think, the concerns around ordering a test is that you don't know what you're going to do when it comes back, right? And that's a little nerve wracking. And so we have an additional thing, and you'll learn about this when you sign up for the free uh, boot camp class that we're doing, right? We have an additional session that I'm going to do with each of you to help you interpret your first lab so that you don't have to worry about that part. Get on the phone or get on one of these webinars with me, and I'll step you through what you should do for each of the markers on your first test. Hopefully that whole fear has been dispelled. And that was done for me when I ordered my first lab some 30 years ago. Dr. Timmons got on the phone with me, who was a very famous lab director at that time. And he spent a long time explaining to me exactly what that first lab meant. He gave me the confidence to go in the next day and tell my patient what to do. And that got my career started. So I'm trying to offer that exact same service that Timmons provided to me, to you guys. Okay. So in order to get all this going, there's four simple steps. Talking to your patient, understanding what their needs are. Determining which of these three essential lab kits are the best fit for that particular person. Then explaining to that person why they should do the test. What's the value of the test? What's the purpose of doing this test? And then, of course, the test comes back and you need to be able to interpret it, set up a program that's going to be life-changing for that person. These are the four steps. And we want to step you through each of these. We have free educational material to get you through each one of these steps as part of the continuing education from this class, okay? So the first step is just getting to understand what's going on with your patients. You just listen to them. This part's relatively easy. You just let them talk about what their experience is. What are the major problems that they're dealing with? And you don't want this to go on for very long. It's like a five or 10 minute talk. And then once you've got that figured out, then you want to think about the three different labs and which lab would be the best fit for what they're explaining to you, okay? And I've got it mapped out in quite a bit of detail because we're keeping it super simple. There's 30 or 35 lab companies that Rupa works with. There's hundreds and hundreds of different test kits. Even if you picked one lab company, even if you just picked one lab company and just wanted to order an adrenal test, it's just overwhelming the number of tests. And one of the first problems that we have when patients come, when students come into my mentorship class is that they just don't even know which labs to order. So we want to keep it super simple. Three essential test kit options. This is just to get you started. In the very beginning, it's not a good idea to order a super complex, super advanced lab kit. Just because you're starting out, save that for six months or a year from now. Start with the basics and you'll be much more likely to be super successful. If you do order a super complex lab in the very beginning for your first test, then you have to design a super complex protocol. And usually those are the really super sick patients. And it just stacks the odds against you being successful. So you want to pick the right kind of person to work with, the right basic test, and then the odds on you being successful would be like 90 or 95%, where if you order a complex lab on a complex chronically ill patient, the odds on you being successful are maybe like 2%. So we want you to be super happy with your first 10 labs that you run and get those first 10 patients better. And this is really the goal of this particular talk is to get you in that zone, okay? How do you decide which test to use? Pretty straightforward. You're choosing from an adrenal test, a GI test, or organic acids. For an adrenal test, it would be if the primary symptoms the person's telling you about are stress-related fatigue. And let me emphasize the stress part of that. Not fatigue, not chronic fatigue, right? But stress-related fatigue. And then the second thing, if there's a GI issue, right? If they have tons of GI issues, then the GI microbiome tests are wonderful and a great place to start. If they have an issue around trouble sleeping or maybe some low-level anxiety or mood-type problems like that, then we're thinking about something along the lines of organic acids. Now, matching the right patient then with the right lab that's the next step, okay? You want to pick a patient you're really comfortable with. Someone maybe that you've been working with for a long time or a new patient that you feel is just the right fit for this. And what you don't want to do is start with a complex, chronically ill patient that you've been working with that you haven't been able to help for a long period of time. Pick someone who you know has either some fatigue, some GI upset, some mood issues, but it's not a lifelong, horrible problem. It's not severe. 
it's relatively mild. So you can solve it in a relatively straightforward and fast way, okay? And then you want to select one of these three essential test kits. I'll show you the exact lab kit and the lab, exact company in a minute, okay? So you don't have to wonder about that. You can just go right to Rupa and click on Dutch test and go right to Rupa, click on GI map. It's super simple. And then you need to then be able to explain the purpose of the test to the patient. Honestly, we're not going to have time to cover off and all that in a short talk like today, but that's why I set up that free bonus class for you guys, the $1,000 free class. It goes through the detail on how to explain each one of these test kits to a given patient. And it's, uh, let's just say it's bulletproof. We've been using that technique for a long time. It works for everybody. Right? And then eventually you want to do the, the protocol stuff. So in terms of the... I've seen so many people get this wrong. I just don't want you guys to get this wrong. And I've gotten this wrong myself. When I ordered my very first lab kit, it was an adrenal test. I can remember it still. It was almost 30 years ago. I got the test results back and it was on a chronic fatigue patient. I got the test results. I did everything wrong, by the way. I got the test results back and I looked at it and I panicked and freaked out because it was a stage two adrenal panel which if you know what that means, it means that it looks like it's normal. I didn't understand how to interpret it. And I didn't know who to call or what to do. I took the lab report. This was the days when it was actually paper because this is pre-internet. And I put it in the bottom drawer of my desk and I stacked a whole bunch of stuff on top of it. And I just hid it as far away as I could. And I told my office staff to call the patient and say that the test was fine, nothing was wrong. And I didn't order another lab for almost a year. That just freaked me out so much. I ordered the right test, but it was really on the wrong person and I didn't know how to interpret it. And I want to eliminate all those potential barriers for you. So you can order the right test, like an adrenal panel on a chronically ill patient, but that's not a great place for you to start. You can choose the right patient. So you could choose the absolute perfect person to work with and then order the wrong test because it's complicated to even figure out what test to order. Okay. And you can write, you can get the right person to test. And if you have a dialogue and conversation with them, select the right test. And that's the sweet spot we want you guys to be in. I want you not to be traumatized in the way that I was. And here's the little matrix of all the things that can go wrong. It's surprisingly hard to do this. I don't know why. It just is. So the easiest place to start is starting with the adrenals. Why? Because Everybody has stress and it's easy to find people who have stress-related fatigue. It's not that expensive a test to do. It doesn't cost that much and it's easy to do it. Some of those samples, some of the lab companies use salivary samples. Some of them use a urine sample, but there's never a blood draw. So it's very easy for people to do the test at home. It's not particularly challenging for them. And the benefits of an adrenal program that's well-designed are pretty significant. People are going to feel better. You'll be excited. The patient will be excited. People sleep better. They have better energy, their mood is better, they just handle stress better, and the programs kick in pretty quickly if you're setting up the right protocol. And remember, I'm going to help you with the interpretation of your first labs too, so you could hand that person a program exactly the same program that I would design, because I'm going to show you how to do that. So it's going to work. The actual lab kit that's the most popular, that's probably the easiest to use, is called a Dutch Complete by a lab company called Precision Analytical, okay? It's known, you know, most people just call it the Dutch test. So if you wanna know, I wanna get started, my patient has fatigue, what test do I do? The Dutch test. Go to your search engine on um, your Rupa account, type in Dutch, it'll pop up. Which Dutch? It's a Dutch complete. Click on that, boom, you got it done, okay? And then with the adrenals, in terms of, again, a little more detail on the exact right patient, you want to find somebody who has stress-related fatigue, not someone with Lyme disease or a severe mold problem or some massive heavy metal toxicity issue. You want to start with a relatively easy to solve case that's going to get better in a few months. Examples that are common would be someone who just had their first or second child and they haven't slept much in the last six months. But the key is before they had the baby, they were doing great. So it's relatively new fatigue that's stress-related from lack of sleep. It could be somebody that's just going through a divorce or they had a death in their family and they're just exhausted and emotionally overwhelmed. But before the incident, before the divorce, before the death in the family, they're doing okay. So this is not like someone who's been fatigued for 25 years. 
And then anyone who has a particularly stressful life event, stress at work, stress completing some graduate school program, maybe now they're finally a lawyer or a doctor or something like that, and they're stressed, someone who's starting their first job, people who have fatigue that's related to stress that you can easily understand and not related to a severe and chronic illness. Severe and chronic illness cases can come later. Give yourself six months or a year to practice on the easy patients. Then you can take on the hard ones as soon as you get a little experience under your belt. You feel more comfortable with what you're doing. And this is true for everything in life, right? We, if you're, I don't know, if you're going to be trained to be a, a pediatric neurosurgeon, but you're not going to operate on a newborn baby on the first day of, of medical school. You're going to work up to that. If you're training to be uh, a contractor and learning how to build houses, you're probably not going to take on a $10 million home building project on your first day. In fact, my good friend, Matt, who's a contractor and a, a really one of the best ones you could imagine, just on all kinds of famous projects. His first job was going to someone's house and changing their garbage disposal. I can remember we were in our 20s and I was, oh, well, that's interesting, Matt. Now he's building beautiful homes, right? You have to step into these kinds of things. Um, and that's just no, true for everything, including functional medicine. But in functional medicine, what happens is practitioners look around and they see who is the person that they haven't been able to help, that they really want to help, that's the sickest person they can imagine. And then they want to test them. And that is a natural inclination. I see this in 100% of practitioners because you guys are healers and you want to help people. But you want to just think about the logic of that for a moment. Don't get, your emotions get carried away and think, okay, wait a minute. Maybe this Kalish guy is right. I'm going to start with a simple case. And maybe in a few months from now, I can build up to these more complicated ones over time. Okay. So you can start with adrenals. You can start with GI. And when we talk about GI, these are like, quote unquote, functional GI disorders. Tons of symptoms can be present. Things like heartburn, constipation, diarrhea. People have upset stomachs, maybe a little bit with food allergies, these kinds of things. And you're often going to find issues that were never detected before. Functional medicine testing for GI just will reveal a whole world that patient has no idea was there. And that's a wonderful thing. You're going to see yeast overgrowth and parasitic infections and bacterial problems and, and digestive enzyme issues, this whole amazing, complex stuff, world of stuff shows up on the GI testing. Now, nobody likes to do a stool sample, okay? So you want to make this test easy to perform. So I highly recommend you start with a one-day stool sample test kit. When you get more advanced, you may want to do three- or four-day stool test sampling, but I would for sure for your first one, for your first 10 maybe, just do one of the companies that has a single day stool sample, and you're going to get some results from that. But the easy kit, the one that's really popular right now, I strongly recommend to get started with is called the GI map from Diagnostic Solutions. Just like the Dutch is for the adrenals, GI map for diagnostic, from Diagnostic Solutions. It's a single sample stool test. It's very comprehensive. It's a great workup, and it'll get you going. It's super popular these days to do that test. Okay. So Dutch for adrenals, GI map for GI issues. So then which patient to test first? The key on this one is that you want to have patients that have a functional GI disorder because they're going to get better from diet changes that you recommend and from a lab-based supplement program. Examples, again, heartburn, bloating, GI upset with certain foods. But the classic one is they went gluten-free last year and they felt great, but they're not really all the way there yet. Those people are always going to get better. So maybe somebody that's been on antibiotics a lot in their past and they just want to check their gut and make sure that their microbiome is in good shape. And what you don't want to test are people with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis or some really serious medical condition that's been diagnosed that's related to their gut. So a functional disorder would be ideal. Now, you can start with adrenals. You can start with GI. You can also start with organic acids. And this is probably the most complex of the first three essential tests that we're talking about. So you can use organic acids, also known as a metabolomics test, for brain problems, for metabolic issues. Mostly in the beginning, I would say, look at uh, people, patients that have a focus or mood or sleep problem, maybe a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of depression. We're not talking about someone who's been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. We're not talking about someone who's been diagnosed with severe depression. We're talking about people who just aren't feeling great. They're a little off their game. It's a little bit more expensive to do than some of the other tests, not that much, 
but you get this massive amount of data. So if you look at it for the level of results you're getting, it's a very reasonably priced test. So I wouldn't let the price put you off. It's easy to perform. It's a urine test only. You don't have to have a blood draw or stool sample. And then the brain programs, which I'm going to help you learn how to do. Okay, If you order this test, you're going to get a consult with me for free. I'm going to show you what to do. The brain programs make people feel quite a bit better, like really fast within a few weeks. So that's fun. It's fun because you get results and it's great to see people coming back and say, I can't believe how much better I feel about that. Okay. So for the test kits, the easiest one to do, a very popular test. It's an organic acids test. The lab used to be called Great Plains. So you may know them under that name. It's now called Mosaic Lab. And again, it's called an oat or organic acids test. Okay. So Dutch for adrenals, GI mat for the microbiome, and oat from Mosaic for organic acids. Which patient to test first? If you want to do organic acids, that's where you want to start. I would strongly recommend finding a mild neurotransmitter problem. Again, it's going to be one that you can correct in a couple of weeks, in a couple of months with the lifestyle changes and some lab-based supplements. Make it easy on yourself. Get some really great results. Build your confidence. It's really the best way to do this. Trouble sleeping, focus and concentration problems, a little bit of anxiety and depression, but again, not diagnosed as a severe medical issue poor mood, you're going to get results pretty quickly. You have, this is a more comprehensive list of the tests. You can do a Dutch for adrenals, a GI map for the GI, and an oat test for the metabolic workup or organic acids. I put this slide up. You can grab a snapshot of it if you want. In case you want to use a different lab company, there's Genova that or has uh, adrenal tests. Doctors Data has adrenal tests. Genova has a GI effects test. Doctors Data has a GI 360 test. Genova has a very famous test called the Nutrival. Diagnostic Solutions, that's the GI map people, they have an omics test, which is getting to be really popular now. So I just wanted to have this in case you don't want to use the particular company that I most strongly recommend. You have a whole bunch of different options here. These are all really, in my opinions, three of the best labs in the whole field for, for relief. Really. Uh, Precision Analytical, Genova, Doctors Data and DSL lab. Okay. So these are the great tests and some options on the tests. If you don't want to do the first one that I recommended, because you may have a favorite lab company already. Great. Use them. Okay. They're all good companies. So now to give you the confidence to order your first test, you're going to have all these additional trainings. So we have that thousand dollar class that we're discounting to free. <laughs> That's a big discount, right? And it's a really extensive class. I put an orientation in there for you so you don't get overwhelmed. Okay. But it's just step by step. It's four weeks. You'll be done in four weeks, I promise. And you, it'll go fast. But it's step by step. Exactly all the patient communication scripts and skills you need to develop so that patients want to do an adrenal lab, a GI lab, or organic acids. It's a three-part class. You can do either one or all three. I would probably just do one of them to get yourself started, but they're all three in there, okay? And then I'm going to offer everyone who does that class a free lab interpretation session. You can sign up for that and log over your first RUPA test with you, okay? Whether it's organic acids, a GI test, or an adrenal test from any one of those labs, lab companies, any one of these lab companies will go over that in class or in a one-on-one -on -one and will get you interpreted. And you'll feel just like I did after I talked to Dr. Timmons in 1995 or whatever it was, which I thought, oh man, this is a nice old guy. I can't believe he spent all that time with me. I'm going to do exactly what he said. And I just believed in him and I trusted him and I did it and it worked. <laughs> I was like, hey, this is cool. And that's, I want to mimic that experience for you all. Okay. Third step, educating your patient. Why do you even do labs? Number one reason is the whole point of functional medicine is to determine the root cause. And labs are often your key to doing that. Is it a Giardia infection in their gut? Is it a gluten intolerance problem? Are they stressed out of their mind? Is their brain not working well? What's happening? You can't tell what's happening just by looking at somebody. You need the labs to help you undercover, uncover what the root cause is. Similarly, the labs allow for a personalized pro program based on the person's genetics based on the environmental stressors that they're under. So one person's fatigue could be caused by something completely different than another person's. And the labs help you differentiate what's causing what. Completely takes all the guesswork out of designing treatment programs. 
if every protocol that you do, every supplement that you recommend is based on the lab, you know it's going to work because the lab is showing you that there's a deficit there and you're going to correct it. So you don't have to just wonder if this is a this problem or a that problem. You have a specific focus that you know is going to really drive that person in the right direction. And then why it's educating patients, why I keep talking about this, why am I offering this $3,000 class on this? Why is that the important step? Because the psychology of this is such that when the patient understands the value and the purpose of the test, clearly, they're going to want to do them. And there's a 100% chance that if you explain the test properly, they're going to want to do the test. Who would it? It just makes sense. The lab results, however, coming back, not only allow you to design a kick-ass supplement program that's going to get them better, but when you get a test back and it shows that, I don't know, your, your liver's not working right or something like that, and then you tell the patient, hey, you're going to need to cut out the sugar, caffeine, and alcohol for 30 days because your liver's not clearing things very well. The person's going to do it if there's a lab to show that there's a reason for that much more often than if you just say, hey, it's good for your liver if you do these things. It's healthy if you do. No, but if someone sees that their liver detox pathways aren't working well, and then you tell them sugar, alcohol, caffeine, 30 days, it's just clean this stuff up, much more likely they're going to follow your lifestyle coaching ideas and be compliant with the lifestyle part if you have a lab test to back that up. So the lab test almost guarantees they're going to buy the supplement program, which is what's really going to move the needle, the supplements. And the lab test increases, I wouldn't say it guarantees, but it increases the odds that they're going to go ahead and, and make the lifestyle change. So that combination of the supplement program and the lifestyle change is really what makes people better. And that completely dependent on the lab testing. It's really quite remarkable how motivating these tests are in terms of people just getting shocked into doing something. Objections. The number one objection obviously is money. People are just like this, the labs are just too expensive. And if that's even remotely what's on the person's mind, then you need to go back to this concept of explaining what the root cause of the problem is and this concept of ruin. The person needs to feel that they're, the patient needs to feel that their current situation is not tenable. It's not, it's, it's not tenable and it's changeable. Okay, and we go into detail in this in the free class that you guys can sign up for. The other common complaint is the person comes in and says, hey, you helped my friend, my best friend, Josh. He's all better now. His fatigue was bad. Now he's better. Can I just take the stuff that he took? And we're like, well, I don't know about that because we're trying to find the underlying cause of your problem and we want to develop a personalized program that's based on a combination of your genetics and the environmental stressors that you've been under. And just because Josh had these certain stressors that led to fatigue doesn't mean that you have the same ones. Even if you both have an adrenal problem, there's different stages of adrenal burnout or adrenal exhaustion. And we want to do the test so we can see where your adrenal hormones are so we can set up the right program for you. Okay. So the testing is a critical step to being able to assess all these different things. So I was in Ohio maybe seven or eight years ago teaching a conference and this doctor came up to me and she said, I don't know what you do in your mentorship class. And she pointed to this other doctor, but we call her the lab whisperer. <laughs> I was like, no way. She's like, yeah. Why, is, why do you call her the lab whisperer? And she said, because everybody that walks out of her treatment room orders all the lab kits and none of us else can, no, 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 it was a group of doctors that were all in the same clinic and then none of the other doctors in the clinic can figure out how to do this. So ever since then, I thought lab whisperer, I really like that term. You can become a lab whisperer in about a month. Everybody learns how to do this quickly and easily. It's not even that hard. It's just not intuitively obvious that you would do it. It would take a while to learn it on your own. And we see at least 95% success rates in terms of practitioners getting patients to do the lab testing. If you have this basic skill, it just makes your life so much easier. Okay. And once you figure it out, you'll be able to use it over and over again the rest of your career. Just want to encourage you. It's none of us were born with this skill, but you can learn it really super easily. Lab interpretation skills development. So this is the fourth step is you got to interpret the thing, right? And this is the intimidating part. This is why I freaked out and hid that report under a drawer because I didn't know how to interpret it. If I had just known that the guy was a stage two, I could have put him on a program and he would have gotten better, which is sad now. Think back on that. But anyways, 
in the beginning of the first six months or a year, just take classes that are focused on these three essential labs. You don't have to take my classes all the time, but do adrenal tests, adrenal lab, adrenal classes, GI classes, look at organic acids classes, learn the, the book knowledge, the information that you need to have in your head so you can really do this well. Hormones, GI, and metabolic. That's a lot to take on for your first six months or year or so. Once you get that knowledge in your head, then you can start to apply it to your patients and you'll get confidence just build. Once you've tested and fixed maybe 20 people, 10, 20 people, and you're getting consistent results with these fundamental essential tests, again, hormones, GI and metabolic stuff or organic acids, then you'll be in a place where you could go on and take specialized training if you want, or you could just stay and do the basics. But a lot of people at that point, in my experience, go on and they learn about mold or they learn about how to help people with diabetes or cognitive decline or cancer patients or autoimmune patients or autistic kids or fertility cases or addiction specialties or mental health specialties. But it's just like the same thing with all the ways that we're educated, whether you're a medical doctor or a chiropractor or an acupuncturist or a contractor like my friend Matt, right? We all learn a basic skill set first, and then the advanced work we add on once we've got this repertoire of basic skills down. So in terms of timelines, and I've watched this for quite a few decades as I've trained practitioners, we had, okay, this is the exceptional crazy story. This is true. We had one doctor went through my entire mentorship program in six weeks. <laughs> he had no kids on a free time and he was really interested and he was really smart. If you have kids, if you have a social life, if you have friends, if you have family, if you're busy with your other work that you're doing in your life, it usually takes around six to 12 months to get super, super comfortable with three essential tests. And I had seen this over and over again with hundreds and hundreds of doctors for a long time. So there's a time frame here. Not too many people can do it in six weeks. And for most of us, it's six months, 12 months. Then you'll have that skill set for the rest of your career. Okay. And the reason why it takes that long is because you got to learn what to do first. Then you got to apply it to a bunch of cases. And then you got to wait until those people get better. And then you'll have the confidence to go, oh, wait a minute. This is actually working for the people. And then all of a sudden it starts to become its own sort of positive feedback thing. It mostly comes down to confidence in order to make this all work. If you want to get started with the further development of your skills, you want to learn how to order the right tests. I've already given you the three, right? Dutch, GI math, and the OAT test. You can just start today, order one of those, and then join this class. And then you'll get access to the free interpretation thing. So when the lab comes back, if you order it today, by the time the lab comes back, this class will be up and running. And then you can send it into the class, submit that lab to the class. I'll review it with you. So I'll tell you exactly what to do, right? And then if you want to go through this other course, that's great too. There's the codes. There's the QR codes. These are all the techniques that we use. If you're ready to jump on it now and order a test, go for it. If you're still uh, not really sure, you can sign up for this course. And then the steps, right? Most of you already have a Rupert account. You can also order the test on yourself. If you're interested in just making yourself healthier, we have tons of practitioners that test themselves for the adrenals. Obviously, we're all under stress. We're all working professionals. Just run an adrenal panel on yourself. Run the Dutch test on yourself if you haven't done one yet and see what happens. Or if you have digestive problems, run a GI test. If you're not sleeping well, you can run an OAT test on yourself. Again, adrenals for fatigue and work stress, GI upset, but we're not talking about really severe GI diseases. And then organic acids for more brain-related stuff, focus, motivation, mood. Also, it does a great job on looking at mitochondria. Well, that's a whole more advanced subject, but also organic acids looks at all the mitochondrial markers as well. Okay? okay, and here's what we have for you. You can scan that to get started. And if you have already ordered a test or you'd like to, you're ordering one right now, you can still scan this code because code, because getting into this class will give you access to the free interpretation session with me. Okay. So you can either sign up here to do this class or sign up here to do the free interpretation. And you'll be getting a bunch of emails from my office to make sure that you have this experience that's really positive with your first test. And that's what we're after. Okay.